Back tonight and in focus, the meeting of uh, the Sadek Troika that was scheduled to discuss the pro-democracy inspired unrest in uh, the kingdom of Eswatini has been postponed. It was scheduled to take place tomorrow, July 21st in Pretoria. The Department of International Relations and Cooperation advised on the 19th July that the meeting had been postponed until further notice. Meanwhile, the government of Eswatini has reportedly denied reports that the meeting was postponed because King Mswati could not be available in person. President Sir Ramaphosa, in his capacity as chairperson of the SADC organ on politics, defense and security cooperation, called King Mswati uh, last, Octo uh, last October rather, to convince him to engage in dialogue to help bring peace uh, to the troubled country. Now, this week's meeting was cancelled a day after a media invitation on Durko's website. Joining us for this and more uh, on the violent situation in Eswatini and uh, Sadek's role in securing peace is Dr. Paul Malindu, Advocacy and Campaigns Officer uh, for Africa at Global Civil Society Alliance. Civicus. Uh, Dr. Paul, good evening and thank you very much for your time and for joining us uh, here on In Focus. Are you surprised at all that a second meeting had to be cancelled at last minute? We saw the first one being cancelled uh, in April uh, and uh, the, this one now being cancelled on grounds that uh, the king of Eswatini cannot appear in person. Yeah, thank you, Tabo, for having me here. Um, yeah, it's not a surprise, it's not a shock uh, that King um, Muswati is um, not attending or has cancelled the meeting. Um, we need to put this into the context uh, in terms of what has been happening in Eswatini uh, at the behest or the commands of the um, Eswatini King, King Muswati. Uh, so the trends at the national level in Eswatini could tell you that this is the the regime, or at least the government, that is not um, looking forward to democratic uh, dialogues, to bringing together all the stakeholders to speak together, uh, but uh, tries to look at his own way of doing things. In April, uh, when he cancelled the meeting, um, there was no reason given as to why he cancelled the meeting. This time, uh, he wanted the meeting just to be virtual and uh, the preparations had been that uh, he would be in attendance. There is no reason as to why um, he's uh, not attending. So um, it is all um, a blame tactics from uh, the, the Swatini government to ensure that uh, things go the way the king um, uh, wants. Uh, maybe one thing to note is that um, the king uh, really... Um, wants to have everything in the control, so maybe that's why he wants, um, and originally he had wanted that the meeting should take place in Swatini under a Sibai um, a dialogue uh, frameworks where he's in the control of, um, of everything. But to bring the meeting or the summit in South Africa, in Pretoria, uh, I, I think would render him um, uh, not in control of what would be taking place. Yeah, uh, so yeah, opposition parties, they're certainly feeling that he's not entirely happy with the draft framework for inclusive multi-stakeholder uh, national dialogue because it includes all political parties, uh, including those who, who are banned. And will, will, will that dialogue be meaningful if those parties are excluded? Now, of course, um, that's why they are, uh, he, he's refusing to put this uh, summit outside because he wants it within the Sebai. And the, the dialogue within the, um, that context is a monologue, actually. It's not a dialogue. Because the, the stakeholders here, the oppositions, and within the context of Eswatini, it's like the oppositions are outside are excluded from these mainstream um, uh, arrangements. So this will not be um, uh, an effective uh, dialogue. This will not be an effective way of resolving what we saw um, uh, since last June up to date uh, by excluding one group uh, outside all these frameworks. So the framework must include each and every stakeholder, including the politicians, uh, the political parties, uh, we have to realize that and uh, appreciate that some of them are still um, uh, imprisoned. The, 
Upomakanyi, the, the, the MPs that were um, uh, arrested and detained last year, they are still in prison. So we cannot be talking of a dialogue, we cannot be talking of a framework to bring peace, to encourage democracy, especially for those pro-democracy uh, um, and, the, and protest uh, and police protests, when actually others are um, guarded, all are locked outside this dialogue. So there is a need for inclusive for Hi. all everyone in this. Speaking of those who were arrested last year, there are those, of course, who have also reported to have been killed, those who have been uh, reported to have been injured in the June 2021 violence. And SADC has called for, for, for an investigation into that particular matter. It's still unclear whether that investigation has been conducted at all, which then uh, raises a question around the effectiveness of the oversight uh, of, 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 of this SADC organ. Yeah, um... Within all this context, um, the concept that comes from Eswatini actually uh, risks the whole SADC arrangement and the SADC as a region um, into um, a weaker, if for one has to mention it, um, a, a weaker arrangement, a weaker regional mechanism. Because um, if a leader at his level, the king, Muswati, can twice, uh, I mean, refused to attend and uh, um, postpone meetings uh, as planned as this, uh, I don't think then he can have the audacity to take um, an advice or a guidance to uh, take um, conclusive, robust investigations and uh, things like that into the murders, arrests, and detentions that, were, that, uh, that happened uh, last year and actually still continue to happen. Uh, reports from the ground will tell you that people um, are still dying, people are still disappearing, people are still being detained. Just as recent as last Sunday, um, some women were really harassed, you know, beaten. Uh, so to expect King Muswati and his uh, government to heed to what the SADC um, um, is saying really um, is to beg a, a lot from, uh, from him. And um, this uh, takes us all to the question of where is the SADAC's uh, teeth in terms of its mechanisms, in terms of its uh, um, protocols, in terms of its, uh, the whole arrangement to bring together to um, their leaders uh, to account and be responsible for what happens uh, in democratic uh, dispensations in states uh, within the context. Is President Cyril Ramaphosa the right man to lead this process as the acting chair of the SADC security organ, uh, considering that, I suppose, with the kind of allegations leveled against him and the challenges he's facing in his own country, one would say he doesn't have the moral uh, authority to be able to call anyone to order? Um, Tabo, I think um, in terms of... Uh, being the chair of uh, the SADC and being the president of South Africa with uh, allegations, it's good you've mentioned that, you've stated that the allegations, we may need to wait and see um, if these allegations are proven to be true or uh, otherwise then we can say maybe um, um, he's not the right person. But at the moment for me the whole issue is not throw away the baby with the water Whatever happens uh, in South Africa, I mean, if there is good intention, if there is good will to bring peace, to bring um, security and harmony in the neighboring country, I don't think we should look at the character, we should look at the personalities, but at the whole framework, because I don't think um, President uh, Cyril is going in as an individual, but as a region. This is a region. We are not saying that, um, for instance, Muswati, I mean King Muswati, refused to come to visit uh, President Cyril, but he refused or he turned down the invitation of the Troika, the Sadak. So uh, the issue of the personality here, yes, plays a lot in terms of uh, dialogue, in terms of peace building, but um, in this context, I think um, we may need to look at the broader framework 
uh, in terms of um, securing peace, securing democratic uh, dispensation in the kingdom of Swatini. So the statement said it's postponed. Opposition parties, they're saying there is a concern that there's no indication of when it will take place or maybe even an indication of a later uh, date. Is that a concern for you? And do you think there, there will be uh, maybe some other processes that would need to be embarked on before a, sec a third date in this particular instant is secured? Yeah, um, indeed, it is a very great concern um, in terms of uh, if there was a genuine reason as to why you could not make it, probably you could have uh, mentioned uh, that uh, it should be next year, it should be next month, it should be next week. But the fact that uh, he says he's not available for uh, in person and then opts for um, a virtual meeting and uh, then uh, from the media reports, then the leaders, I mean the president as the chair, and then the Namibian and Botswana delegates, um, I mean, emphasize that it should be in person, and then eventually turns it down. It's, it really indicates um, um, the contempt the, the leader has in the whole arrangement. Um, and what can we do next? I think the pressure needs to continue from all corners. And for us at uh, Civicus, uh, with our campaign on Stand as My Witness campaign, where we focus on um, uh, looking, uh, uh, voicing out the human rights defenders' issues that are detained, that are uh, arrested, that are being persecuted in all counties, we need to bring together all minded, um, like minded organizations and actors, media institutions, media actors, to ensure that the pressure continues so that uh, we can see um, peace, we can see democracy, we can see good governance uh, in the country. And as well as SADAC should not lose um, um, hope, should not. Uh, pull down the guards, uh, should continue to engage because um, uh, he could have postponed this, but I guess with the, and I hope with the um, uh, commitments and the further engagements, uh, we can see um, the, all the parties coming to, uh, to the table and uh, discussing peace in the short term. Uh, Dr. Paul, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on tonight on In Focus. That's uh, Dr. Paul Molindo, Advocacy and Campaigns Officer for Africa at uh, Civicus, a global alliance of civil society uh, organizations.